Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to the channel. I am Stylosa and I'm joined by the wonderful... One amongst many and I'm... I'm flexing. I'm... I'm showing... Oh, mm, oh yeah, he's flexing. flexing. Oh, God, these oh. guns. Oh, mm. God, yes. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, we're going to be talking all about flexing today. It's one of my favourite topics recently with Overwatch because it's, it's an interesting and somewhat divisive thing that ends up happening when you start talking about flexing, which is this. Is, is flexing, or is being a one-trick pony an OTP the best way to play Overwatch style? What, what is the best way? What is the way that God, Jeff Kaplan, intended oh. us to play Overwatch as well? Hmm. So the way Overwatch is intended to be played is you flex, right? So you should, in an ideal world, be able to look at your team comp and think, okay, we need this to build a rounded comp, so I will play that. Then when we go into the first engagement, uh-oh, the enemy team has a comp which counters our comp, so we will now change to beat the enemy comp. That is in a very ideal world. What tends to happen is you go into the game, you look at the hero select screen, if you've got the game minimized, if you're looking at your phone because you may be playing on consoles and you're waiting for the matchmaking to go or whatever, you look at the screen and you're like, oh god, uh, okay, a Genji and a McCree have locked in. So then you're like, hmm, um, but I, I really wanted to play Genji this game, but uh, I'll just lock in Ash, right? So now you've got three DPS, but then three of the other guys who haven't selected heroes, they also may want to play DPS. So then they just lock in DPS, or you get the very awkward DPS standoff, where it's like, okay, I've locked DPS. It's your move now, Mr. Player 3 with the question mark. What are you going to select? Oh, I see. You've selected another DPS, so we've got a massive overload of DPS. And this doesn't just happen for DPS, right? This can happen for any role. I've legitimately been in games where I don't want to DPS, and I've had to DPS. I know that is very, very rare, but it does happen. So the thing here we've got is... In an ideal world, you go into Overwatch and you flex. But like I said, what happens is you go into the game, people select the heroes they want to play. And often you're in a situation where you've got to make a decision. And the decision is this. Do you play what you want to play or do you play what the team requires? Now, the danger with this is if you play what the team requires, you're not playing what you want to play. And if the team doesn't exactly perform based on whatever criteria you've got in your head, that is namely just do not get rolled in the first fight. Oh my God, if I was Genji, I would have been so much better there. But I'm playing Reinhardt because we're on, um, you know, Hanamura first point and we need a barrier to get through the choke. But now I'm not playing Reinhardt anymore after the first attack because I'm just going to play soldier i feel yeah. immersed it's more like torbjorn let's let's be real i'm gonna play torb I'm oh gonna yeah play Tor I, actually i've got torb's hammer in my hand listen that's the torb <laughs> hammer <laughs> I'm so, it in it's only foam Star but there you go probably <laughs> both run into this problem because we have pretty good rigs we have pretty good machines and we have fancy pants ssds and stuff like that Star is just slightly more fancy pants than mine but both of us load overwatch nice and quickly so if i want to lock in mccree let's say before everybody else does i generally can so i'll lock in mccree straight away i want to play mccree in this game so i've locked him in okay other guy locks in genji let's say and then third guy will lock in reaper or we'll lock in ash or we'll lock in that and there's that instant deadlock that ends up happening now i don't know about you today but this happens to me very 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 often where you sort of start going uh what do i do now what what do i do and the the good thing to do like the the correct thing to do i suppose is well you go okay fine fair enough I will flex, I will swap, I will go to Reinhardt, I will play a support, I'll play a healer, and just make sure that the team works. The issue that I always run into, and the issue that I have, is that you never really feel rewarded doing this. It always just feels like that you are being pushed into playing something that perhaps you didn't want to play at that time, and the guys who are stubbornly locking in what hero they want to play and saying on it, those guys are getting rewarded because they're going to grind the heroes that they want to practice on. They get to practice Genji forever, they get to practice Widowmaker forever, they get to practice McCree forever, whatever, and they get better and better and better at those heroes and then will eventually climb while you, while you're playing Lucio one game, Reinhardt the next game, Zarya the next game, and you're flexing constantly trying to help the team work and function, but you never really feel rewarded for doing so. There's no benefit to you to do it aside from perhaps winning a couple more games but in reality it doesn't seem to pan out that way it never really feels like it happens that way so this is the problem with overwatch right your sr is an absolutely terrible way of determining how good you are at the game because it, it's not specific to heroes so i am like okay what at the very highest rank I ever got to, um, uh, well, I remember I was in top 500 for like a game and then I got, then I was out of it. That was when I was playing Winston, but I think like the highest, I can't even say this, but it's like stable rank was probably 
like maybe 4.1k or something. But it's not like I was playing hundreds of games in a season on that account, right? So inevitably, I probably would have felt. But that account was playing tanks. So, well, main tanks, it was Winston and Reinhardt. That was it, right? Then I think my DPS is okay. But it's probably only if I'm on like the best... I'm having like the best games ever. It's probably only high master at that point, yeah? Then like my support, maybe again, if I'm having like the best games. But often when you start breaking it down into the individual heroes, it'll start dropping down. So my Mercy is not very good. My Anna is better than my Mercy. My Lucio, I'd say right now, is probably my best support. Zen, I'm not as good with Zen as I used to be, right? My DPS, I'm not as good with Soldier as I used to be. I used to be fairly good with Widow, but not anymore. So what I'm trying to say, guys, is there's a lot of variation in your hero. Pool. So the guys who just play the same hero over and over and over again will get better with that hero, which in turn makes them or gives them more of a chance of winning the game. But here's the big kicker. They can only win the game if guys like you out there go, OK, I'll flex this game, guys, and I'll play Reinhardt. But the guys who are just spamming the one hero, like they probably won't see you again, right? They're just going to keep accelerating away because they are genuinely getting better. Now, the reason why me and Josh, have, uh, Josh have put this video together is there's a thing going on in the community at the moment where on the competitive subreddit for uh, Overwatch, they're saying like, okay, there's a guy who says, look, when I realized that everybody is at my rank, has uh, probably got a similar skill level to me. However, why am I at my rank? I'm, I'm maybe not a DPS. I'm, I'm maybe a tank. The guy's locking in DPS straight away. Maybe they're mechanically better than me. So I should just let them play DPS. And I should go on and build the best team to try and, you know, make sure we win. Because at the end of the day, you want to try and win. The issue with this, and, and Josh did touch on this, is it's really frustrating after a while. It's okay for a few games if you're like, okay, I'm going to flex. Because I'm like this. I'm like, I'll flex because I want to win. But I often, and like Josh said as well, you'll bounce around playing different heroes. Like you're playing Ryan, then you're playing Zarya, then you're playing a support, then maybe you play a DPS. And that's not really the way to play Overwatch if you want to play at the best level. Because, I mean, Josh, you can probably answer this question, but if I'm playing tanks for a few games, I then cannot go and play McCree at the level I'm playing at or Soldier. I'm just like, I'm completely not ready for it. I'm not warmed up for it. I've been playing a different game, basically, because it is a totally different game if you're playing tanks you're or playing, supports. Yeah, you're going to see a worse performance, let's say, than if you were just playing McCree consistently throughout the evening. And I, I do want to sort of nip something in the bud. I'm sure someone's already angrily typed this in the comments, which is, oh, you're just DPS mains who just want to play DPS every single game. And, well, nasally, man. No, that isn't the case. We actually go into this and we fully expect and understand that this is a team-based game. You expect some level of compromise to happen. The thing with compromise is this. You expect other people to compromise with you. And at least on Europe, especially on the European server, where both me and Stylos are played most of the time, communication, let's say, isn't the best. Communication no, definitely no. isn't the first priority for a lot of people. And so when you get those deadlocks, when you get those moments where people just aren't flexing off what they want to lock in straight away, well, then you hit those moments of, uh, and it's just silent. Well, and you just, you met with a brick wall. Like, also, that's I, I, I'm not a even a wall. DPS main e e either. Like this season on the Stylosa account, it's got Reinhardt. It's, it has double the playtime of the second played hero, which is Ash. So there's Reinhardt, Ash, then McCree. So there is two DPS there, but then it's Anna, Winston, Arissa, Lucio, Moira, Zen, it's you can see what I'm doing, and it's and it's kind of like a, it's like a rainbow color thing. Like all the bars are fairly close to each other, with the exception of Reinhardt, because I've played more Reinhardt um, than than other heroes. But it, it is it is different occasion sometimes. But I think the big thing here is being f like flexing in Overwatch is. I remember like about it's probably like two years ago now, but I put out a video and said, look, you shouldn't just one trick a hero. You shouldn't just play one hero and then that's it and just never ever try and change the the hero you're playing to try and count on what the enemy team are doing the reality of that is after playing overwatch for so long is while that's still true and the spirit of the game is you should flex like i am not saying here just go and be a one trick and just play one hero and just think i don't care what my team are doing because you're ruining the experience for your team as well sometimes but then again people argue back well i want a good experience myself and that's totally understandable and then i just argue back going well the game is designed to let you do that so it ain't really our fault right the game should have systems which stop you from doing this and this is why we all ultimately come back to the whole like give me a role select let me lock as a queue as a tank let me queue as a dps because then at least you know 
you are going into a role that you kind of want to go into. I know it's complicated because I know there's loads of heroes. I know there's loads of different types of DPS. There's different team comps. There's different supports. There's different tanks and, and all of that stuff. But, you know, maybe that would help alleviate some of the issues. But to flex or not to flex and which one gets you the most SR is... It's re it really is a difficult one. I can tell you, I remember, I mean, from the games I've played today as of recording this video, um, there are four games I've got recorded. So the first game, and what I often do is I, I, I name the file, right? So the first game is called um, Garbage Game, Hammond on Enemy Team, just doing what he wants. Nobody bothered to counter... Uh, to, to to nobody pop bothered to swap to counter. I've totally butchered what I've written here. Um, I was flex, right? So the, I remember this game. There was just a ham and do what I liked. All we needed was like a sombra or something just to shut him down. Instead, the DPS just were playing Genji and Tracer, I think. So this Hammond was just like uncontested for all of the game. It's quite frustrating. Um, the next game I've got is uh, bad game, then good. Played selection of heroes ended on tank. So that, I, I I think what happened in that game is that the tank stopped playing tank because the tank got frustrated. Yeah. So just stopped playing. So then I'm like, okay, I'll play tank. So even though I know this is helping the team win and I think that was a victory, it's still frustrating, right? Because it adds up. The next game I've got just says, good tank play, Winston. So I was playing tank, which I, I like playing tank, so that's fine. Uh, and then the last one, this one is named forced to support and team all over place. Then I went, tank due to thrower now i i've probably used some of the footage of these clips uh, for this video but i remember that because the lucio the guy just didn't pick a hero uh for our defensive phase on Volskaya, and then picked lucio and was just like wall riding around the out he wasn't even with the team you know what i mean i'm like what the hell and so again that's kind of frustrating but yeah that's um flexing is it's kind of a thankless task and i feel like you maybe don't get rewarded as much as the guys that just do what they like. It seems really bad to say yeah, that, you know, because maybe that isn't true. I think that, that, that to me, and it's not just about being rewarded in terms of SR, but it's being rewarded in terms of just gameplay satisfaction. Like, you don't enjoy, or at least I don't enjoy, having to sort of bow and go, oh, yes, sir, you get to play yeah. your Genji this game. Yes, sir, of course, sir, I will play Lucio, sir. Yes, sir, I just don't worry about me, sir. It's, oh, it's okay, it's fine, sir. Like, I don't like doing that every single game and feeling like, well, you know, and for us especially, like, I put out this tweet a little while ago. For us especially, we needed, like, McCree footage. Recently. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, well, okay, we go in and we try and lock in McCree to play in the game. And I don't go in expecting every single game to get to play McCree. I expect it to be a somewhat novel experience sometimes, but I expect at least one every so often. And in most of those games, it was literally a case of I pick McCree, someone else picks another hero, and then the third person picks DPS, and I just kind of go, oh, okay. And then sort of we go and we try and push, and sometimes we just stay on this, sometimes someone else changes. A lot of times I change, and especially if I'm streaming, I try and be the person to change as well, because I know that as a streamer, as a quote-unquote, and I hate the term, but influencer, I need to be a good person as well. I need to try and set an example, and as a result, I am often swapping off the heroes I want to play, which then makes me frustrated, which then makes me assault mine, which then makes me less interesting to watch. You can sort of see the cycle happening. Yeah, there. I mean, I mean, it's not, it's, it's not, it's a tough position. Yeah, but it's not just, it's not exclusive to streamers or YouTubers or whatever. I mean, if you're going no, out there and playing not. the game, um, there's a few things you want to do. So, firstly, it's a game, so you want to have fun. And the way you have fun in Overwatch is if your team's coordinated. And the way the team's coordinated, the very first thing it needs is players playing the heroes they want to play, which forms a team comp. And that is a massive gamble right now, because what it relies on is guys going, okay, I'll flex, okay, I'll play the, the, the heroes that we need. Like, okay, we've got a lot of DPS guys, but we've got no tank. The, the, the most common things I see is generally uh, people won't pick main tanks. What they will do is they will pick the off tanks because you can tell they're probably DPS players, right? And they think, oh, God, we need a tank, but we don't have a tank. And maybe I'm sitting there like on a support and then they'll pick like Zarya or Roadhog. Well, you can't use those heroes to get through a choke if you don't have, you know, a Winston or a Reinhardt or whatever. You're just not going to be able to do that. So then often I'm typing like, OK, I can tank guys. And then it'll be like, well, OK, I can support. But then... I swap to the tank, but instead of picking, like, the main support role, they pick, like, Zen or something. I'm like, guys, we don't have enough healing. And then the gate's open, and then it's just like, uh-oh. And off we go onto the attack with a, not a very good team comp, and probably we're going to suffer because, well, we just don't have a, a, a you know, backbone to the team. And that can build frustration. So what really annoys me with Overwatch is it's the only game I've really played that makes you not want to play it after a while. You think, like, if you kept playing the game... 
you'd be like, okay, into the next one. It's, it's like the XQC thing, right? Go again, go again. We're going to go again. But you can keep doing that. And over time, yeah, sure, it, it will balance itself out. The game's always trying to put you at 50-50 win and loss rate. But it's just not it's just not enjoyable to do that, you know? W would you sit here and go, okay, Josh, right, we're going to play 10 games of Overwatch today, but the first five games are going to be defeats and <laughs> you're going to be, like, playing just whatever the team needs. You're not going to be able to play that Genji that you've really been grinding in quick play because, nah, nah, there's, there's no way. You, you're going to have to play tank. Then you're going to have to play support. Uh, and then you're going to have to, in one of the games, try and act as a babysitter. In fact, I think in Korea, there's a thing that they say, and it basically means um, Overwatch babysitter. And that's what they call somebody who tries to flex and somebody who tries to keep the team together. <laughs> <laughs> it's a brilliant term. It's it's a tough position to be in, and it's something that I know Stylosha and I have talked about quite a lot, which is the idea that Overwatch is one of the few games on the planet where you don't get to do what you want to do quite often. And like it feels like it's more often than not that you don't get to have the experience that you want to go mm. and play, while other similar games, other competitors, you get to go and just play the game you kind of want to play if you're playing a MOBA. And a lot of MOBAs let you lock in heroes now before you even go into like the pick ban phase and stuff like that, or so let you at least lock in a role so you have a good idea of what you're going to be playing. Now with this, the one trick thing, I will say like one tricking is like it has inherent flaws. Let's say like all the Doomfist mains who are now going, oh my God, he's so terrible. I can't play him anymore. Well, now they're desperately trying to find other things. My advice is always this, try and cultivate a hero pool and don't think like, oh, my hero pool is going to be McCree and Ash because those are two very similar heroes. If they're countering one, they're countering the other. You want to have some, a little bit of versatility in there. You want to have say McCree and like my hero pool at the moment that I'm trying to cultivate is McCree and Widowmaker who are kind of similar and Farah as well on top of that which gives me a very very robust set of options and a lot of different counters for a lot of different situations on top of that I also have an off role which for me is support because I used to be a support main I'm now trying to transition into being a DPS main and as a result my support is great I can play Zenyatta very well I can play Ana very well and I can play that very comfortably also I'm a very versatile player so my Reinhardt isn't half bad either so I can flex where needed but I will say it is way more satisfying for me personally to just go in and play the same hero or the same like two or three heroes yeah. as often as possible and it feels like it's the best use of my time and that at the end of the day I think is you know when you're picking between do I play Overwatch or do I go and play another game well, which one is going to give you the most bang for your buck? Which one is going to let you have the most fun? And at the moment, I'd say flexing just isn't fun or rewarding. No. And I think that's a Yeah, problem. I think that's the big issue, right? Because you don't want to go into a game and be like, okay, uh, so this clearly looks like a game where I need to fill. Um, and also, we seem to have some, like questionable players maybe they're a bit angry in the comms or whatever so you're like okay uh, i've got to try and keep the game together it feels like a chore you come out of the game out of that match and it might only be a 15 20 minute game but you're like oh i've just been through the ringer i'm like absolutely destroyed and then you don't queue for another game that that is not how overwatch should be ladies and gentlemen so i think just to wrap this up should you flex or should you one trick it's still a very touchy subject i don't i think right now you just have to do you, but please try and think about the experience for other players on your team. So if you do look at your team comp and it is basically set in stone and you know, you've know you got three DPS and you've got a tank and you've got a support, don't then lock in another DPS. Think maybe we need another support or maybe we need another tank. In that case, you probably do need a support, but that happens a lot, right? You see these guys and they're like, oh, I'm just going to play what I wanted to play. And you're like, uh, what? This just isn't going to work. But then again, maybe they've got slow computers. Maybe, you know, I, this probably doesn't happen on console because everyone's got the same speed. But there's all of these things going into it. I just hope that next year something happens to this game. So we're not having to discuss this again, you know? All right, guys. I've been Stalo Set and he's been Josh. You can follow me on Twitter, which is at Unit Lost Gaming. And uh, you can also check out the competition, which is running right now. There should be a link in the video description. And there are links to this on Twitter. So go and check that out on my Twitter. That is, of course, it's a massive Overwatch uh, giveaway. And Josh, where can we find you? You can find me at one underscore amongst many on Twitter and at ESL underscore one amongst many on Twitch. Just whack one amongst many to anything. There's also like a bunch of YouTube vlogs as well with a bunch of coaching, but I don't upload too much to YouTube these days, but you can go and check that out as well. Otherwise, yeah, I think that's, that's about it for us on this. So OTP or Flex, what's mm -hmm. better? We'll catch you guys on the next Who one. Who knows? You guys do. Toodaloo. Bye.